So we are Trivia Kua Du Sud, um, known as Ohiwa Black Diamonds. Um, and what we have in front of us is our Tuba Milano Sporum, um, also known as the Perigord Black Truffle. So we got into the truffle industry um, really by luck. So we fell in love with the property at Ohiwa um, and the surroundings and then discovered that we had a Trufier. Um We didn't know too much about truffles. Um, so we did a lot of research and we certainly learnt by our mistakes. The first time we found a truffle, um, Machu was on his hand and knee, hands and knees in the truffery, picked up a truffle, smelt it and thought, ooh, and threw it, thinking it wasn't a truffle. Then we realised that it was a truffle, so then he had to go back on his hands and knees and found the truffle um, where he'd thrown it. So we certainly learnt by our mistakes. Um, so we were on a bit of a high, so we thought, oh, this is such a niche um, product. So we uplifted over three and a half kilo, only to find that once we'd lift them and cleaned them up, that they weren't ready. So we wasted three and a half kilo. So we waited for about a month, and then we decided to really market ourselves. Um, so we got a little... Um, basket and made it look real pretty and off we went with about three kilo up to Auckland and went door knocking on all the restaurants um, and that's how we picked up most of our clients um, and to this day seven seven years later we're still producing um, our little truffery is 30 years old so it's one of the first trufferies to um, be developed by um, Crop and Food New Zealand along with scientist Dr N Hall and we were a trial plot to see if the truffles were going to take within the Bay of Plenty. Um, we're quite unique. The truffle like very poor soil um, and enjoy the um, volcanic soils that we do have. We're known throughout the world and according to the scientists, we're New Zealand's top producing truffery and we produce more truffle per hectare than any other truffery and possibly the world. We're in lots of books, so we get referenced many times due to um, our unique abundance of truffle that we lift each season. Mm. Yeah, so our, our little truffery, uh, it's comprising of only 22 trees at the moment. Um, and uh, I think the, the, the biggest haul that we've had was about uh, 22 kilo. Uh, mind you, it's a couple of kilo of that were rotted and insect damaged, but that was, that's, that's pretty good for 22 trees. It's uh, pretty close on a kilo a tree per season. So, um, yeah, so, so we're, we're real happy. <laughs> yep, so we're currently, New Zealand's palette for truffle is very small. Um, we sell to high-end chefs up in Auckland and all throughout New Zealand. Um, we're concentrating now on our products. So we've just developed our um, truffle honey um, with using New Zealand Manuka truffle honey with a UMF of plus five. Um, and we've also developed our Himalayan pink truffle salt. Currently we've um, been involved with um, Greg Oli, which is a local olive oil grower and we're now working on doing a truffle oil so that's going to be a virgin um, olive oil with infused truffle these are this is a normal lift uh, for for us and uh, we lift twice a week so we're getting we're getting them from this size down to peanut size down to the, our peanut size so the sizes are varied but the aroma um, everything's ripe, everything's smelling delicious. <laughs> uh, the last uh, couple of days we've had some frost, some light frost, and that's, that's triggered our truffles to start ripening, and the aromas are more intense, and it's, um, oh, they're perfect, they're, they're beautiful. Yeah, so uh, so today we're we're in abundance of truffle. We we on sale for nine other truffle truffleries here in the bay, um, and 
uh, the, the grading. We, we also are exporting. Uh, we've got this lot here going to Hong Kong on Monday. I'll, I'll take it up to Auckland on Monday and it gets on the plane and arrives in Hong Kong 12 hours later. Um, so we're testing the waters there. Um, and uh, all the different grades and stuff, is, uh, it's taken quite a, quite a while to, uh, to, to get it right. Uh, for the culinary standards and exporting standards um, so but we've we've worked away at it and and we have followed France's uh, grading methods um, and mm. yeah so. so we have um, three different classes so we've got the extra class which is a perfect um, round truffle I'll just get Macha to show us a perfectly round this so is, that that there is what we call that's what um, we just lifted today it's got it has no insect damage it's firm all the way around and the aroma is incredible so it's not a not an off aroma it's a eat me aroma <laughs> yeah and then we have our um first class which may have slight damage um so we'll just pick out a first class to show you yep okay so this is a first class so it's just a, a bit of cracking, but it does have a slight little, couple of little holes. Um, but that's first class, not extra class. So something like this without, we call that an extra class. And then we've got a first class with very minimal, but a little beautiful aroma. Yep. yep. And those, those classes are used for show and tell. So that's used for shaving in front of the clients at the, at the tables. Um, we then have what we call our second class. So there we can see that it's had a bit of damage and we've had to cut it out. A lot of chefs like to use these for their butters and pestos and their sauces. Um, and they sell um, quite well. So they, a lot of chefs use those. It becomes more affordable for them to use um, when they're making a um, sauce from them. Hmm. The Eastern Bay of Plenty is very productive. Out of uh, all the trufferies within New Zealand, the Eastern Bay um, produce the, the most and... Um, probably has the bulk of trufferies in the North Island within mm. the Eastern Bay. So it's a very, not many people know, um, but yeah, when it comes to Little Apodaki, we have some very top producers yeah, with the um, black truffle. Yes, we do. So currently we're doing lots of presentations alongside MPI. Um, reason for this is that we really want to start growing the New Zealand truffle industry. So we're looking at Hapu um, with all their unutilised land and land that actually can't be utilised for growing avocado and kiwi fruit. So give them the point of difference and we want them to now connect with the truffle. Um, also focusing on farmers, um, farmers with their riparian planting. So a lot of riparian planting is done with um, poplar trees. So we're trying to encourage them to grow with hazel and oak to produce the truffle and at least then they have some sort of return after six to ten years down the track. Um, right, didn't I yeah so with our inoculated seedlings we've we've inoculated seedlings for the last couple of years now um, we're, but we're doing it on a little bit bigger scale this time round uh, because of all of the interest from a lot of the lands trusts uh, that are pretty keen in, in growing truffles and, and, and getting into the industry. Um, so with our seedlings are all certified, they're all tested so that you are assured of having the right uh, truffle spore attached to the roots of these seedlings. Um, so, so you've got the best shot uh, straight away. With our consultation service, we, if, if, if you're looking to get into the industry and you come through us, you're not only assured of having a certified seedlings, but you're assured that we're there for the long term. Uh, we're there to guide you through throughout the years of the, the seedlings growing until harvesting and hopefully at that time we'll have the export door open for all the hub group and farms. Yep. Yeah. So I, I guess the question is, is why, why are we doing this? Well, as, as I said before, we want to grow the New Zealand truffle industry. We want to get it out there to New Zealand that we can grow truffle in New Zealand. Um, and we've had so much interest from overseas. So when we look at the Northern Hemisphere, they're depleting in their truffles. One is due to climate change and the other is due to rapage. So over in the Northern Hemisphere, it was growing wild. It was never farmed. Um, here in New Zealand, it's farmed, so that's the point of difference. When we look at the truffle industry, 
um, and we look at the kiwi fruit industry, it's going to cost you anywhere between 500000 to a million dollars just to set up for the kiwi fruit industry, and that is before you even get the licence. Um, when we look at the truffle um, farming, it's going to cost you maybe thirty to seventy thousand dollars to set up a hectare of truffle. So there's a, a big point of difference in what you're growing and in the in the cost, knowing that you're going to get a higher return when growing truffle. When we look at the overseas market with their depletion, so we've had so much interest from Italy and France, um, and they were the mother countries of the the truffle. Um, and now they want to come to New Zealand, they want us to start exporting to their countries for the clean green image and we've got that point of difference having the cultural um, effect attached to it as well. That's right and it's, a, it's, it's their off season over there so, so it works well. There are more um, New Zealand trufferies producing uh, nowadays. Our local markets are starting to get flooded. So, so Anita and I have been concentrating on the export market for the last two, three years now. And we've made some really good relationships there. Those relationships are just growing and, and strengthening uh, year after year. Um, what, we don't, what we don't export and what we don't um, sell in the local market, we uh, then diverse into our added value product. Yeah, absolutely great. But we're taking it one step further as well. We're now looking at the properties within the truffle. So we have a big company overseas, L'Oreal, who's already using the black truffle within their beauty products. So it has a lot of properties, anti-aging properties. It's full of vitamins and minerals. So we're sort of looking now at developing our own products in regards to the beauty and the health side yeah, of it as well. Absolutely, the, 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 the health properties within the truffles are incredible. Um, it, it also has a property in there that's an aphrodisiac, so Annette and I are, are working with... Uh, <laughs> We're experiencing <laughs> the effect. Yeah, worked quite well, don't we? <laughs>